Dick Sporting Goods. The hustle and bustle of a New York afternoon continues all around the city. For some, it's almost time to catch a cab or train home. For others, work is just beginning, and that's the case at Madison Square Garden. The second of four opening round games features the hometown St. John's Red Storm facing a Pittsburgh team suffering through a disappointing campaign, fighting uphill odds to make it to the title game for the eighth time since 2001. Welcome to the 2012 Big East Championship, presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Part of Championship Week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Pittsburgh and St. John's in the 12-13 matchup. Here in New York, and the winner advances to play Georgetown tomorrow. Connecticut already a winner earlier today, beating DePaul. The Huskies will play West Virginia tomorrow at noon. Dave Pash alongside Doris Burke. Pittsburgh has had a rough year, Doris. They've been to the NCAA tournament 10 straight years to make it 11 in a row. They have to win five games in five days. I think this is about pride. This is the most successful program in the Big East over the last 10 years. If you're Ashton Gibbs and Nasir Robinson, I want to come out of New York City with a little of my pride back. Well, you mentioned Gibbs, preseason player of the year in the Big East. Has not played well this season, was honorable mention. All Big East, he's featured in our one-on-one -on -one segment along with two outstanding freshmen for St. John's. It's been an uneven year for one of the better shooters this conference has seen. It has not been smooth on the offensive end, but when they beat them by 20, Pittsburgh beating St. John's by 20, he had 19 points on 7 for 14 shooters. And bottom line is Mo Harkless and D'Angelo Harrison have got to lead the St. John's team in every aspect. Harrison sets a rookie record for scoring. Harkless is a surefire pro. Can they get a third score today? Our starting lineup brought to you by American Eagle Outfitters. The Pittsburgh Panthers 16 and 15, 5 and 13 in the Big East. Ashton Gibbs, 15 points per game, shooting just 33% from three after 49% a year ago. Woodall has battled a groin injury, missed half the season. Monsieur Robinson playing through tremendous knee pain, along with Lamar Patterson and Dante Taylor. And for St. John's, only six scholarship players, five freshmen. And this is the 12th time that the fresh five, as Steve Lavin likes to call them, will start. This lineup is five and six, including a win over a ranked Notre Dame team here at the Garden a couple of weeks ago. And then the six, three freshmen from the as you mentioned, Pittsburgh knocked off St. John's last Wednesday. These two teams met at the Garden a year ago in one of the great regular season matchups for Steve Lavin and St. John's, which had a terrific year, beat a handful of top 10 teams here at the Garden, including Pitt. White Hardy with the game-winning shot baseline, did not step out of bounds, knocked off the number four Panthers. They also beat Duke at home, Notre Dame, teams here at the Garden on round two. It's first NCAA tournament appearance since 2002. Steve Lavin, of course, not on the sideline as the head coach, the acting head coach right now is Mike Dunlap, been an associate head coach at a couple of places. Outstanding coach. And Lavin has full trusted him. Steve's still involved in recruiting and Involved on a day-to-day -day basis says he will be back next year. He did come back, tried to coach in November. His last game was the 18th of November against Texas A&M. Meanwhile, on the other side, Jamie Dixon, who, believe it or not, is taking a lot of criticism right now for the way his team has played. But even with this year, highest in Big East history, you see it there in terms of conference winning percentage, regular season, and Big East tournament combined. Extraordinary to me that he would take such heat after a decade of such, you know, excellence. And now, let's play ball. Think about it. One of three, Carl Haas, Wally, Ritecki, Earl Walton are officials. One of three schools with 20 overall wins, 10 league wins, and an NCAA appearance 10 straight years. Kansas and Gonzaga are the other two. Here's D'Angelo Harrison, led St. John's in scoring. They go to Achua on the baseline, shot clock at five. 
pointer into the lane, and that's an offensive foul as Nasir Robinson, the heart and soul of this pit team, draws a charge. St. John 6 and 12 in league play this year, lost two in a row coming into the 2012 Big East Championship. Gibbs. We'll get more into his situation and what's gone wrong with him, but last year a terrific three-point shooter. Looked like he had a bright NBA future. Came back to Pitt. And Nasir Robinson shaken up. We mentioned that he's been battling through tremendous pain as Garrett picks up the foul. Garrett shaken up as well. Robinson's had knee surgery twice. They have to drain that knee. In fact, the coaches said something they've had to drain it so much they couldn't even believe it that he would play through it. Just knock knees that time with Garrett. And it is that right knee that's given Robinson problems. Had surgery in October, and Garrett out of the game. Robinson stays in and still attacking, missed the shot. But Pitt will get the ball as Harkless and Achua could not get the rebound. Jamie Dixon has said that Nasir Robinson is as tough as they come. Averaging 11.7 rebounds per game. Here's Woodall way off the mark. Taylor trying to take it away from Pointer. And it's St. John's ball. Here's Mo Hartless reported that he is the Big East Rookie of the Year. That announcement will be made later. But Hartless will go to the free throw line. First foul on Pitt. It's on Robinson. Well, I love his game. Uh, he can make the perimeter jump shot. He can rebound in traffic. There's times where he makes scoring look completely effortless. Uh, this kid's a major, major talent. First freshman of the Big East to average 15 and 8 since Carmelo Anthony. Well, you think back to one of the pivotal games that uh, Mike Dunlop has. They're on the road at Duke. They're getting absolutely waxed. And Harkless comes out and has a huge second half. I mean, how easy it would have been for, for a young team to just roll over in such a tough environment. But they scrapped and clawed, showed some pride, and he was unstoppable. Harkless from Queens. A Big East honorable mention. The only rookie in the Big East to do so. Pittsburgh will have to operate against this zone that St. John's likes to throw. A lot of communication necessary. Here's Gibbs from the corner, and that's a great sign for Pittsburgh. He struggled shooting the ball after a year ago, hitting 102 threes, six in a quarterfinal loss to UConn. A little different this season, absorbing that high-level defender and maybe multiple defenders being thrown at him. A season ago with Wanamaker McGee couldn't send that many people out. Second offensive foul on St. John's. That's on Achua for pushing off with the left hand. But I think you make great, great point. If, you, if you're Pittsburgh and turnovers have been an issue, your offensive execution has been an issue, but if you can get this guy making shots, getting his feet set, that will help immensely. Gibbs another three. This one off target. Ripped down by Harkless. Here's Harrison for three. Couldn't get it. And Woodall with the board. Here's JJ Moore. Five straight games in double figures, averaging 15 points per game during that span. Gibbs will try it again. And that's his second three. He's got all six for Pittsburgh. Well, you know, he's going to finish his career. In his hometown from Jersey, just across the river, on a down note, trying to make the most of this opportunity. He's got six points already. Uh, Scotch Plains, New Jersey, not that far a ride, either by train or by car. And pointer not there, or not close enough to challenge him. And listen, he's a better player off the dribble and creating his own, but still not great. So sell out, be a little bit closer on your contest on that perimeter jump shot. 
In your opinion, what's happened? Is it confidence? Is it? Well, I think it starts with the games that Trayvon Woodall made because he slides up a position to the one. Uh, there's more responsibility on him defensively, which has been something that Pittsburgh has been bad at as a team. Uh, now you get an open shot with Trayvon Woodall. They've changed sides of the floor. He's getting good looks at the basket. And one member of uh, the Pitt program, somebody they thought in watching film as Woodall hits, that last year, as soon as Gibbs caught it, it was up. And you saw it a couple times here. But earlier this season, and for most of this season, there was hesitation when he would catch. Where last year, it was a quick release as soon as he got his hands on it. Well, he probably wondered, did my thinking have to change with Trayvon Wood all out? It's not all about me being a scorer. Now he's thinking about, okay, well, you know, when do you pull the trigger as a lead guard? You know, Brad want to make Gary McGee and Gilbert Brown were all long-term Big East players that were tough as nails. They won the regular season title last year. They were a one seed at the NCAA tournament. Stripped by Harkless, Woodall on the floor. Harrison has it. Gibbs will challenge, and Harrison has four quick points for St. John's. Red Storm within two. put size at the top of this zone, whether it's Garrett in this particular instance, Pointer is at the top of it. Patterson into the lane, finds Gibbs for a two-point shot. Gibbs has attempted five of the eight for Pitt. He's got two field goals, this shot there by Garrett, and to leave Zana with a rebound. Hit by two, the lob, and Moore couldn't catch the pass from Woodall, who averages about four turnovers a game. After the break, Andy Katz going to talk with St. John's coach Steve Lavin here at Madison Square Garden when we return. This is the 30th year of the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden. St. John's won the first championship here back in 1983. Chris Mullen was the tournament MVP. Johnny's too much down the stretch as they beat Boston College 85-77. Steve Lavin now in his second year as the head coach at St. John's trying to get the Johnnies back to that championship level. And Coach Lavin is standing by with Andy Katz. Well, thanks, Dave. We're high above here at Madison Square Garden with Steve uh, since November when we were here covering those games. At the time, you said that you thought you came back a little bit too quickly. You have not returned to the bench since then. Why? Well, for starters, welcome to the crow's nest. Uh, like the view from up here, I can tell. Uh, and you're looking very lean and mean, too. I got to learn about that vegan diet at some point. Uh, I'm on the Carnegie's Deli diet at this point. Uh, but, uh, you know, coming back 33 days after a seven-hour surgery, uh, it was premature. And I learned the hard way, uh, paid the price as a result. 
and I'll be more prudent this time around. Uh, and I'll be back next year coaching, uh, but I think the smart thing to do is to listen to the doctors, and this modified schedule uh, has allowed me to move the program forward without having to coach in the sidelines where you tax the body more in terms of the physical aspect, uh, the demands of coaching the game. What have you been able to do in terms of your other coaching responsibilities, including traveling and recruiting? Pretty much across the board, uh, adding value by working on a daily basis uh, with our staff, uh, working in concert with the staff for game preparation, attending practices, uh, film sessions, one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings with the players, as well as group settings where I meet with the team, uh, continuing to recruit, uh, some strategic fundraising. You've got to always keep up with the Joneses in terms of revenue streams and trying to enhance our program on all fronts, do things in a first-class manner. So there's really no aspect of the program I'm not involved with on a daily basis other than uh, coaching on the sideline because that's the area where the doctors are most concerned uh, the vital signs, as you know, go north when you coach a game. And I just wasn't fully recuperated when I came back. How physically taxing was it for you to coach? Well, you know, there's different styles. You know, there's a Tony Dungy, there's a Tom Landry type of coach. Uh, very mild-mannered and reserved and contained. As you know, the way I coach, I'm up and down the sidelines, uh, drenched with perspiration, uh, screaming across the court at referees or trying to implore or encourage our team uh, to, uh, to play at a higher level, trying to inspire the, the troops in the timeout. So for me, it was exhausting. But I think the biggest issue was while I was cancer-free, I was only 33 days removed from a seven-hour surgery. And that was my first experience with cancer. Uh, so it's not as though I experienced that before. And also, uh, you know, my first experience with a major surgery where you're out for seven plus hours. Obviously, negative recruiting goes on. And there's chatter out there wondering if you will return for next season. What are the chances? Yeah, I've had some good ones. I'm an iron lung. Uh, there's another mysterious disease. Uh, the cancer was back. Um, I'm going to, you know, develop a second career. Uh, all kinds of different rumors. But you have to keep things in perspective, keep a lighthearted approach or touch to things, and understand in the grand scheme and competitive world of college basketball, people are going to do things like that. Uh, but I'll be back next year, and that's why we're in position to sign another stellar recruiting class. Uh, could be one of the best of my career. So we're really happy not only about the fresh five and company that are playing today, but also the prospects of our program moving forward. 8-6 Pittsburgh. How does uh, Mike Dunlap get St. John's back in here and get the lead? Well, when you play Pittsburgh uh, over the past 10, 12 years, it's always about rebounding the ball. They're so physical. Being able to execute against their pressure, their man-to-man -man adhesive uh, style of defense, and you've got to take care of the ball and try and get good shots. And then late in the game, uh, you've got to be able to convert from the foul line. So if we can rebound, take care of the ball, and then convert from the foul line late, we'll have an opportunity there. All right, best of luck. Hope you come back soon. Okay, and yeah, I really want to know about that diet down the line as well, too. All right, we'll talk after. David Doris, you may want to try calling the game from way up here next time. <laughs> well, we certainly wish Lab the best. I'm glad to hear he's cancer-free. What a job he did last year with players who had been under a previous regime as St. John's turns it over. Uh, a group that had, in many accounts, underachieved. In the previous regime, Coach Lab and his staff got the most out of it. He ended up winning 21 games, 12 in league play. All those upsets we talked about here at the Garden. Garrett picked up his second foul. And anybody that gets in foul trouble, that's newsworthy because St. John's only plays six guys. He certainly could come back to TV. He hasn't lost his chatty nature by any stretch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's sharing the sugar. That was that, that was one of the best. Uh, he and Brent Musburger were a team for several years here at ESPN. Big Ten games on Tuesdays. Pittsburgh on top of St. John's by four. Ashton Gibbs has six to lead the way for the Panthers. Here's Robinson with the left hand. Can't get the bounce. And now I'm going to call an offensive foul on Taylor for pushing. Try to get the rebound. That's his first. It, it was a good set, though, and it was an offensive foul. So good call, but a good set. Why? Well, Jamie's team, they switched sides of the floor with the pass, then the ball went into the post, and they got a very good look at the basket. So if you're looking how you're navigating that zone to start, very well. The St. John's team that has struggled to score this year, 14th in the Big East in scoring and in field goal percentage and last in three-point shooting. There's Harkless on the drive. A two of there can't put it back. But was fouled on the second attempt. That's a third-team foul on the Panthers. 
Well, you make a great point about St. John's. I mean, they, they made 98 fewer threes than their opponent and took for my lap a significant number of fewer threes. In fact, the real danger from three is, is D'Angelo Harrison. I mean, he's got 76. No one's within 50 of him in terms of their threes made. And he tied for the league lead in most three-pointers. Cameron Wright with a foul. How much more incredible does that number become when you think about he's their only guy who can make yeah. that shot? Really? Har Harkless had only 16 threes, shot about 20% from there. Achua even tried it. And he was one of seven. Achua gets both free throws. St. John's within two. First points since the 341 mark, or three minutes, 41 seconds. <laughs> Into the game's about five minute span there, knocked out of bounds by St. John's. It'll stay pit ball. Winner to play Georgetown tomorrow. Georgetown the five seed. St. John's has never been a 12 seed. They're five and six in first round games. Lost to Syracuse in the quarterfinals last year. Remember their win against Rutgers in the first round with a controversial ending. We're going to revisit that a little bit later as John Johnson, freshman out of Philadelphia, buries a three from the corner. Here's Achua. He'll put it on the floor, driving on Taylor. And working hard in the offensive glass, but he can't finish around the rim. Three of the five baskets for Pittsburgh have been three pointers. Meanwhile, St. John's has missed its last nine shots. Woodall for three, too strong. Robinson took a swipe at it, tried to bat it in, and could not. So far, Harkless for St. John's, just two points, one shot attempt. And that's a second shot attempt. We talked about he hadn't hit a lot of threes. That's just his 17. It gets St. John's within two, and the talent, you can certainly see it on both ends of the floor for Mo Harkless. See, I think that's a subtle thing for a defender, but Nasir Robinson should have had his left hand up to challenge that shot. It would have been closer to where Harkless is trying to, to make that shot. It's a simple thing. Woodall in the lane, out to Cameron Wright, and he's off target. Got his own miss, and it was fouled by Pointer. That's two on Pointer and two on Garrett by team foul for St. John's. It's a two-point lead for St. John's. Rutgers ball, 4.9 left. Long pass down court. Rudiman, turnover. St. John's survives. Wait, he just threw the ball out of bounds. There was no time on the clock. With two seconds left, three He's steps, and he stepped, stepped out of bounds. Out before he passed it with about 1.9. Well, he traveled, too. 
They stopped officiating this basketball game. Rutgers loses. The three officials working that game were Jim Bird, Tim Higgins, and that man, Earl Walton, who is officiating this game. What are your thoughts on him working a St. John's game, given that he was involved in that controversial finish last year? I guess I would say I'm, I'm surprised he's working a St. John's game. I'm not, I don't object to him necessarily, although you could probably make the argument that maybe he doesn't work the tournament. I, I, I would disagree with that assertion, but put him on the first game maybe and avoid the two teams where the controversy was. I agree with you. I, I, I think hard to tell him he can't work, but I, I'm just surprised they didn't find among the two other games not involving Rutgers or St. John's today to put him on another crew. Well, and you think about last year and uh, those officials withdrawing from the rest of the tournament so as not to be a distraction. I think they paid enough of a price. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, so I, I would have no problems with him working. I just would be sensitive to the two teams where that controversy was involved. Pittsburgh on top of St. John's by two. Gibbs had it blocked. St. John's trying to get a fast break bucket. Machua with the catch. Got fouled and count the basket. Boy, heck of a catch. I mean, geez. Achua is not known as an offensive player or a guy who's got tremendous hands, but I'll tell you what, Harrison, this is like a LeBron James pass in terms of the distance covered the first time, second pass on the weak side of the floor. Nice catch, gather. I thought he might have traveled, but he kept that right foot down, able to take the contact. Dixon thought he traveled. Coach Dixon probably disagrees, but I thought it looked like his right foot stayed down. Second foul on Cameron Wright, 15 foul, and God's gift to Chua at the free throw line. And he's having a terrific opening half. He's got five points, five rebounds. Well, it, it, the, I guess if I'm Jamie Dixon, it, you know, it, he would have been fouled. That's why he would have moved his foot, so he could have been upset. And Dante Taylor lost the ball there, did hit a St. John's player. Taylor has been an enigma. McDonald's All-American. Yeah. In the last meeting with St. John's, he, he goes for 17, 8 of 8 from the field. Was his second straight game in double figures after 16 in a row, under 10. And then in the last regular season game, as Taylor gets called for a foul here right on cue, his second foul, he didn't score against Connecticut. Looked like he was intimidated at the times of Andre Drummond. And he's certainly one of the reasons why Pitt has struggled this year. But fairness to him, Jamie Dixon would say his knees and his back have got to be healthy for him to play well. Uh, I think Andre Drummond did impact his thinking. We, we saw him on the catch pass it out and not even think about looking at the rim. But he also admitted to the, you know, sort of being the first McDonald's All-American, the weight of expectations sort of weighing on him early in his career. St. John's leading by one midway through the first half. Taylor on the bench right now. Malcolm Gilbert in the game. Heartless in the lane, won't go. Achua kept it alive again, but now cleared by Nasir Robinson. And bad pass again by Woodall, stolen by Harrison. Harrison all the way to the bucket. And D'Angelo Harrison, who led all the power conferences in scoring by a freshman, has six points in this one. It's an eight to nothing St. John's run. Well, I love D'Angelo Harrison, mostly because of his competitive spirit. Yes, he's a tremendous shooter, and he's a great scorer. In fact, one of the best in the country at scoring and one of the best in the Big East. But his competitive spirit, the way he lifts the guys around him. Look at the reaction of the bench. Mike Dunlap goes and gives him a touch. That, that kind of guy, this is what I'm talking about, a personality having an impact on the people around him. Set the St. John's freshman scoring record this year. D'Angelo Harrison from Missouri City, Texas. And a lot of times you'll see freshmen when they get in league play, their numbers go down. His went up 
He was the third leading scorer in the Big East in conference games, 18 and a half points per game. He was under 17 points per game in non-conference action. Both teams five of 17 from the field. Both teams five turnovers so far. St. John's on top by three. Robinson stripped and fouled. Sixth team foul on St. John's. That's on Harrison, his first. ESPN's coverage of championship week continues tonight with a doubleheader at 7 Eastern, the Women's Big East Championship. It's Connecticut and Notre Dame. Then the Horizon League men's title at 9 will be decided Detroit and Valpo. Here's J.J. Moore off the inbound pass, driving and drawing a foul. He'll go to the line for two. That's on Harkless. That's his first. Well, this guy's been tremendous. Yeah, J.J. Moore, five straight games and double Moore. figures, 15 points per game during that span. Sophomore from Brentwood, New York. He's got size. He can board it in traffic. Those are his season numbers, but of late, he's been very good. Can use a dribble. Pitt has the longest active streak in the Big East of NCAA tournament appearances, 10 in a row, one of just seven NCAA schools to make it to 10 straight NCAA tournaments. Obviously, to get to 11, they've got to win the championship. Harrison's three in and out, rebounded by Patterson. I think he was well beyond the pro line when he took that shot. Here's Woodall, 4-3, not there. 11 of the 18 shots by Pittsburgh have been three-point tries. They've made three. Here's Green falling away. Kept alive again by Achua. Harkless gets the bucket, but Achua doing the work. Well, and remember, there's stretches down the, the later, latter part of this year where Achua hasn't played as much, but because of the size and rebounding prowess of Pittsburgh, they have no choice. He's got to play minutes, and he's done a really good job with his activity level. And also, again, just six players. And Malik Stitt was the seventh, but he quit the team about a month ago. They're down to six guys. Shot clock inside of 10. Hit ball trailing by four. Gives the leading score with six points, but he hasn't scored in a while. Hit two threes early in the ballgame. Shot clock at one. Patterson had to let it fly. And offensive rebound by Gilbert, and then a missed layup by Moore. Here's Green on the drive. He missed the layup. Hit the deck. So it's a five on four for Pitt. Woodall, great bounce pass. Moore hanging and scoring. Wow. Great finish of traffic. And how about the pass? Good jump stop below the free throw line. Harrison with another bucket. 8.6 rebounds for D'Angelo Harrison. And a timeout called by St. John's. Winner of this game advances to play Georgetown tomorrow at the 2 o'clock contest. Connecticut has already advanced. The Huskies winners today over DePaul will play West Virginia tomorrow. As you look at the night games, Seton Hall coming off that loss to DePaul, is it a must win? They absolutely oh. have to win that game or are they definitely out of the tournament? Well, it's so funny because Kevin Willard said, I don't want my guys thinking about the NCAA tournament bubble. Back-to-back -back losses, uh, Rutgers and DePaul. See, now if I want a committee member thinking about Seton Hall, in a game like Rutgers, where you're, you're talking about in-state rivals separated by very little geography, I almost toss it out, okay? The concerning loss was to DePaul and the way you lost it. So in my estimation, yes. Again, the committee is supposed to look at the entire season and look at the beginning of the year the same way they do the end of the year. Don't know if that's realistic. Yeah, and Herb Pope basically said, you know, there's no question about it. You feel pressure in this day and age, Twitter and Facebook and, you know, just your, your the people you go to school with and class with. Are you in? Are you out? It's a constant beating of the drum. Patterson nails the jumper. And Pittsburgh back within two. First points for Lamar Patterson. Here's 
Goes at Chua, who has six rebounds to go along with five points. Gets into the lane, finds Harkless. Harkless, left side, able to hit the jumper. Nine points for Mo Harkless. How, how smooth is he? I mean, the first word that comes to mind, just smooth. Doesn't he look like a prototypical NBA player? Things are effortless for him. A lot of scouts and GMs are talking about him. Obviously not publicly since he's just a freshman, but a lot of eyes on Mo Harkless. As uh, another St. John's foul, so that'll put Pitt at the free throw line when we come back. One of the outstanding freshmen, maybe the freshman of the year, Mo Harkless, little pull-up jumper. There's always hope in March. What's the sign? Well, the Statue of Liberty. There's light in New York City. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Live your life. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Volkswagen. Visit your local dealer and get a great deal during our Safety in Numbers event. New York City, St. John's on top of Pitt at the Big East Championship by four as Doris takes us inside the play. Well, managing transition, whether you're defense or offense, in this particular case, the offense manages transition easier. Watch what happens. I'm not sure why D'Angelo Harrison right there stopped the play. Why he played him to the middle of the floor, because then it becomes a numbers game, and your pass is an easy one to the baseline. Nobody steps up, stops the ball. Nobody puts pressure on the ball, and it's a nice, solid cut. Now J.J. Moore able to get to the bucket there. Now has three points. He's really been the go-to scorer for Pitt in the last couple weeks with Ashton Gibbs struggles and Woodall has been up and down as well. That, that middle of the floor, the painted area, and then extended all the way through the other painted area, a lot of guys refer to that as the close pro slot or the pro alley. And it's valuable real estate. Especially in transition, you know, if you've got a great shot blocker, maybe you're funneling them in that direction. But in that instance, the middle of the floor is where Trayvon Woodall has his best decision making. Mm -hmm. One more free throw for Ashton Gibbs. Third in the Big East and foul shooting at 86 percent. Got them both and pit with him too. Gibbs now with eight points. St. John's team that looks confident despite the fact that this team beat them by 20. 
kind of been that year for St. John's. They've had some games where they've gotten blown out. And then we had the game here as Harkless gets in the paint. We had that game against Notre Dame where St. John's played very well. Well, you, you've got talent. You know, I'll tell you what, I feel pretty good if Mo Harkless is on my team, especially if I can get him back if I'm yeah. Steve Lavin. 11 points for Harkless so far in this one out of the 24 for St. John's. He has been my favorite freshman. I, I love Shane Bahan and I love LaDante Hinton for Providence, but Harkless is just so gifted offensively. It was reported today that he's going to win the Big East Rookie of the Year award, and you can see why. Two beautiful moves by Harkless. Lab loving it. 13 for Harkless, half of St. John's total. Mo Hart was six foot eight, 208 at a nearby Queens in the South Kent School in Connecticut. So much to his offensive game. Handles it in the open floor, uses one dribble to get himself to the rim. He's got post up ability. He's got length, athleticism, three point range. He's become a better communicator with his teammates. Just so much to like. He's got 13 today. He had 12 points in the last two games combined. He only played 22 minutes in that blowout loss against Pitt. Was bothered by an ankle injury. He had 32 in his Big Ace debut, the most ever in a debut in this league. Ashton Gibbs with his third three. He's got 11 and cuts the St. John's lead in half. Three point Red Storm advantage with four and a half to go. Gibbs shooting it well, got 11 points. His pointer drives and a foul called. One official said travel, and Carl Hess will win that one. Hess called for traveling. It is traveling, so turnover by St. John. I like that. See, as an, an officiating team, they're called a team for a reason. You know, Walton wasn't sure. Hess had the better look at it. Yep. A good teamwork there. <laughs> Now they extend this and they'll trap in certain spots. Gibbs on the drive. Short pull off is good. 13 for Ashton Gibbs, who averages 15 per game on the season. That's where he's so much better. I remember it. He was a guy who came off screens, just a standstill shooter. Zana called for the foul along the baseline. A Chua will go to the free throw line. That's the 17 foul on Pitt. First on to leave Zana. Well, Ashton Gibbs, you're playing in New York City for the final time, and he's making use of the first 20 minutes leading Pittsburgh. We've got a ball game.
All right, Carl, and here's St. John's on top of Pittsburgh by one. Seton Hall in action tonight against Providence, Rutgers, Villanova in the nightcap. Winner of this game will play Georgetown tomorrow. We get Doris's take on Seton Hall earlier. Let's let Andy Katz jump in here on the Pirates. Well, officially, the selection committee got rid of that last 10 games going into the NCAA tournament. But it's still how you finish. Each member, the 10 members of the selection committee, will look at how these teams play, especially on the road down the stretch. And the way they lost that DePaul game will definitely hurt Seton Hall in the minds of some of the selection committee members. But on the flip side, losing to UConn without hurt Pope, those kinds of things are factored in, especially in injury. Sometimes the suspension is treated differently because those are not something that you can sort of get away with. But an injury, that was unforced. Obviously, nothing's going to do with it. So Seton Hall almost has to win tonight to feel a little bit more comfortable. They do not want this in the hands of the selection committee. All right, Andy, as a two of this is the front end of the one and one. The, the thing that I keep going back to, Doris, curious your take, it, it just seems like you know, there are not a lot of great at-large teams. Somebody has to get it. And one of the reasons maybe why Joel Lenardi continues to have 10 Big East teams after, even after that season all lost to the ball. Right, a Pac-12, it's not as strong. A Big 12, it's not as strong. And then the only thing you're thinking is, is this conference tournaments to play out. A Fairfield takes an Iona spot. Fairfield's a very good team, don't get me wrong, but they win the tournament and probably wouldn't have gotten another lar large bid. Robinson missed a layup that would have given Pitt the lead. St. John's has made six of its last nine from the field, but only a one-point advantage. Mo Harkless, the leading scorer with 13. We've got a kickball, so it stays St. John's basketball. Excuse me, let me correct myself. Loyola, not Fairfield, excuse me. But it's just interesting, uh, you know, and I, I, Seton Hall, I mean, just back-to-back, -back, it's disturbing just because you think about how well Jordan Theodore and Herb Pope were playing early in the year. Herb has not had that kind of consistency. How does he show up here inside the garden? Theodore made second-team All-Big East, Pope on third-team All-Big East. First team is Jeremy Lamb, Jason Clark, Jay Crowder, the only unanimous selection, Johnson Odom, Chris Joseph, Kevin Jones. Pitt trying to retake the lead, tip ball, and out of there with it is Pointer. He'll drive and score. A couple things here. One, St. John's has more than competed on the backboards. Remember what uh, Steve Lavin talked to us about uh, when Andy talked to him. Rebounding number one, they've got the advantage there. You're letting them get out in the open floor. Make St. John's a half-court execution team. Gibbs on the drive, draws the foul on Harkless. That's two on him. 19 foul, so one and one for Gibbs, an excellent free throw shooter. Sorry, Dave, this is a young team, so execution at a half court becomes more difficult, or at least something they're not as nuanced at. But when you allow them to make plays off their defense, get in the open floor, these are easy baskets for Mike Dunlap's club. Dunlap came to St. John's with Steve Lavin, but he was an associate head coach at Oregon and Arizona, was in the NBA a little bit with George Carl in Denver. Well, he's a details guy. I mean, if you want to talk to somebody about Big East teams, he's, he's a resource I use. And he's a guy I'd be looking at if I was an athletics director. I just think this is a tremendous basketball mind. And I'll tell you this. We talked a couple weeks ago. He's talking about having interviewed for a head coaching job. He's a self-reflective guy. So I'll be honest with you, because I've blown interviews. You know, I just haven't been able to deliver in those, you know, sort of settings where maybe I'm not opposite 15 guys, you know, in, in, a, in a process. So... You know, he's thoughtful. He's a tremendous basketball mind. Sometimes your committee's got to be able to look beyond those things. Do you believe he can reach young men? Because there's no doubt he knows the game of basketball. Two minutes to go here in the first half. St. John's on top by one over Pittsburgh in the 12-13 matchup. Winner to play Georgetown tomorrow. Pointer way off the mark and out of bounds to Pittsburgh. On his side of the equation, I'm being careful about the kind of job I take, too, as a head coach. You've got to believe you're, you're in a position to win ball games, and your administration supports you. Now, he was at Arizona when a lot of things going on with Lute Olson, and many thought that Dunlap should have gotten that job. He should be the head coach right now at Arizona, but that goes way back before the Sean Miller era. Dunlap, age 54. And we'll see if he gets an opportunity elsewhere, given the recruiting job that Coach Lab and company have done as Gibbs misses on the three. Batted around into the hands of Harkless. Ahead to Harrison. A pull-up three. Off the mark. 
And cleared by Nasir Robinson. The fourth or fifth chance Pitt has had to retake the lead. Let's see if the Panthers get it done. A three-point try is good by Patterson. First time Pitt's led since the 11-minute mark. See what I mean about a half-court execution? Looks a little different than when they're in the open floor, doesn't it? Right, yep. Let's see what they do with the shot clock at seven. What kind of an attempt they get here? They get a drive by Harrison, lost the ball. And meanwhile, while two St. John's players were on the other end, Robinson is fouled. Harrison and Achua were saying the ball went out of bounds. It actually hit the stanchion. And therefore, it should have been, if nothing else, pit ball out of bounds. But the problem was those two guys were arguing with the official while there was a play on the other end happening. Yeah, don't stop playing until you hear the whistle. You can argue all you want. It's not going to matter if you're not getting back. So Robinson, only a 50% foul shooter, will be at the line for two. Green committed the foul, his first 10 team foul. Now let's see if the ball does hit the stanchion and go out of bounds. Well, it definitely did. They were right. Yeah. But again, when the whistle doesn't blow, why are you still arguing while well, there's a fast break going the other way? Because you're 19 years old <laughs> oh <my laughs> and you're in your first year in the Big East. <laughs> About a four-second difference between game and shot clocks. Green with a pull-up one-hander that won't go. Achua can't follow. Oh, Achua, he's just, he's worked so hard, he's just not finishing. Woodall, Elliott, dunked by Robinson! And Wally Ritecki went down, as did Amir Garrett. Both appear to be okay. Well, Pittsburgh leading by five. St. John's can hold for the final shot of the half. Well, one mistake leads to another. How about this? Just get in transition quickly. And I, I, I think he took him down on the way out of bounds. Here's Harrison with five seconds left. Harrison with three. The pull up short. And that ends the first half. A 13-2 run by Pittsburgh to end the half. Ashton Gibbs with 15 first-half points. Mo Harkless had 13. Andy Katz with Jamie Dixon. Well, Jamie, what do you attribute that uh, flurry of a run here to the close of the half? Well, we got some layups. We got the ball inside. Got the free throw line. Took too many threes early in the game, and that's kind of uh, what we talked about. So getting more penetration, getting to the rim, and getting some dump-offs. All right, so how do you keep them a little bit off day here in the second? Well, we got to attack the zone. We're seeing retreating too much, and they got to attack it. We got to get penetration. Know that they're going to be helping to find the open guy. All right, thanks, Jamie. Right, thanks. Back well, to you, Dave. Pitt has not won a game when trailing in half, so it's a good thing for Jamie Dixon. His team is ahead by five at the break here in the first round of the Big East Championship, 33-28 over St. John's. Time now for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Carl Ravitch and Jay Williams. Guys? Championship week is the craziest week of the year. Tony Akimba, Connecticut, has won the Big East Championship. An opportunity to write history. Maryland finally winning one for Lefty Grizzell. Buzzer beater. Goliak tried to follow Van Horn. Will he get it? He got it! He did it again! Welcome in to the ESPN3 Halftime Report. I'm Prim Saripapat. Coming up, it's a three-way tie for the Big Ten title, but who has the most momentum between the Spartans, Buckeyes, and Wolverines, or is there a dark horse? We have a preview of the Big Ten tourney coming up. But first, let's send it over to the college basketball scoreboard crew for a look at the Big 12 championship. That tips off tomorrow at 7 p.m. on ESPN3. Guys, take it away. By the way, Kansas and Bill Self's team play. Certainly an outside chance to go all the way, right? Get to the Final Four, win an NCAA tournament. Big 12 we're going to focus on here as the tournament begins on Wednesday. They are 
the one seed Kansas and at times play like a team that that could be a top four in the country. Give us a case for Kansas that you'll see Thursday at 3 Eastern on ESPN2. How strong they are, how much potential you think they really have. Well, first off, I think Bill Self has to be up for a coach of the year in the country. He's done a phenomenal job with this basketball team. Thomas Robinson, a player that last year was averaging 14 minutes per game. Now we have him in National Player of the Year conversations. And this team, they won their at least a share of eight consecutive Big 12 titles. That says enough about this basketball team. Thomas Robinson has been an absolute beast down low. Jeff Whitley at times he can disappear, but he's came on late. It's very strong, having double doubles. Tyshawn Teller from the point guard position, Elijah Johnson as well. They have the depth, and they also have the front court power to go a very long way. Not only in the Big 12 and win this, but also in NCAA. There team. are games where you watch Taylor and you think he could be the Player of the Year in Most college definitely. basketball. You said Self's done a great job. So why has he done such a good job? What, what about him as a coach? Do you say he should be in that consideration? Well, I think for the fact he's been able to motivate his players constantly. Tyshawn Taylor. Taylor, a player from Jersey City, New Jersey, played for Bob Hurley Sr. at St. Anthony High School. He's gone through it this year, trying to change to be more of a point guard, and at times he wants to be a scoring guard. I think finally now, towards the end of the season, he's became a leader of this basketball team. Prime example in that game against Missouri in overtime right. at home for right. KU, he took the ball game over. All right, let's talk about Missouri. You just brought them up. This, this is a team, at least from afar, the skill level doesn't appear to be what Kansas has, and yet when they play together as a team, they present all sorts of matchup problems. They're, they're unique. Well, they're very unique. Uh, they very much remind me of a Marquette with the way Marquette yeah. plays yeah. basketball. Four out, one in. Riccardi Ratliff, Ratliff, excuse me, one of the most efficient players in the game of college basketball, you know, shooting over 50% from the field. And then you talk about their spacing, Ravi. You bring Michael Dixon off the bench. He's a guy like Jason Terry in the NBA can score a big amount of points. Marcus Dimon, who made big-time shot after big-time yeah. shot. You saw him do that at KU. And then you got Kim English, a guy who has 6'7", 6'8", can really play that pop role in a pick-and-roll situation. Situation, shooting over 50% from the field and close to 50% from the three-point line. Love the way this team can play, and they definitely provide mismatch issues. Ratliff had a field goal percentage. It was a lot higher than 50% at one point. Yes, he did. He's the type that strikes me that could really benefit from a big tournament here. Well, it must be great when you're playing with guards who all have the vision to pass the ball and get you involved in a play. And with Michael Dixon's ability to drive, with Phil and Matt Pressey's ability to get into those gaps, Ricardo Ratliff, his hands are always ready and he goes up strong. That's what you want out of your big man. All right. Is there a sleeper team in this uh, Big 12 tournament that you got an eye on? I think there is. I, I really like Iowa State. I'm a big fan of Fred Hoiberg. I play with him at the Chicago Bulls. He's known as the mayor. He might be the president of this basketball team, of, this, of the state of Iowa, actually. And Christofferson, a guy that can knock down the threes. They have a lot of transfers that have came in. Chris Allen, the transfer from Michigan State. Uh, Royce White, also the transfer in from Minnesota. These guys have the talent to go a long way. And they've beaten the likes of KU. And they've beaten the likes of Baylor. So they have that confidence rolling into the tournament. You think before you become president, you can go like governor after Mayor be governor. No, he's going to skip right to president. He's going right to the Yes, right for the sure. Time. All right, is the final going to be Kansas and Missouri? I hope so. I hope so. You know, the border war is a, a game that we're talking about not having anymore. Right. And, and how could you not want to see that game in the finals? Both games have came down to last plays. And that last game in particular at KU, Thomas Robinson makes a huge block to send that game into overtime. Questionable block. Questionable block. You think it's a foul. I thought I a little contact is okay. A little contact is okay. But how could you not want to see Missouri and Kansas? Right. All right. That's the Big 12. Uh, you'll be able to see it, of course, on our family of networks. That's ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN3. With with Jay Williams, I'm Carl Ravitch. It starts Wednesday. Thanks, guys. We have to take a quick break. Coming up, more with our college basketball scoreboard crew as we've got a preview of the Big Ten tournament. Don't go away. I'll give you C.J. Wilson and Pavel Bob for Prince Fielder. Bring back Gardner you got a deal. Oh, I can't give up Gardner. I'll give you Sabathia and Beltray for Fielder. How about Rocky for Cough? You got a deal. ESPN Fantasy Baseball. Sign up for free at ESPN.com. Hey, man, you really think I had a chance to win this thing or what? Dude, you invented three catchphrases. Get some toast, because here comes the jam. That was brilliant. Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, everybody, we have a little announcement to make today. The Employee of the Month Award goes to our very own Doris.
She does make a mean, sloppy joke. I mean, how hard is that? I'm waiting for the world's best to walk my fairways and renew my tradition. First and second round coverage of the Masters, coming in April on ESPN. The most incredible championship week performance, in my opinion, it's easy. Kemba Walker. Kemba Walker. Kemba Walker. Leading his UConn Huskies to five straight wins in five straight days. It was fulfilled with game winners. Tardy and Kemba! Last second shots. Steps back. Go! And late game heroics. He owns New York! The greatest performance ever in the history of championship week. Welcome back. You know, most winners don't want to share their trophy or their title. But after squandering a 15-point first-half lead against the Buckeyes, Michigan State was forced to settle for a three-way tie for the Big Ten title with Ohio State and Michigan. But who has the most momentum heading into this week? Our college basketball scoreboard crew has a preview of the Big Ten championship. With Jay Williams, I'm Carl Ravitch. Uh, this is Champ Week, obviously, and when you think about the Big Ten, you think naturally of Indianapolis, Indiana, where every championship is contended, Super Bowl and now Big Ten tournament. You'll be able to see the coverage beginning on ESPN2 at 5.30 Eastern time on Thursday is the first round, and a good one there with Northwestern. You think they need to win that game against Minnesota to kind of secure themselves? Well, they're 1-10 in 10 versus top 50 RPI. That one win coming against Michigan State. They have to beat Minnesota to have a chance for an at-large bid. Friday, Michigan State kicks off its tournament at noon Eastern on ESPN, so Michigan State is there. Michigan's the two-seed. Ohio State, of course, the three-seed. When you think about Michigan State and Ohio State, they just played. Tom Izzo said that loss, because they were up by so many, was the toughest loss he'd ever had at Michigan State. He, he's had a lot of great wins. I, I find it surprising that was the toughest loss. Well, Ohio State played a really good game. William Buford made a big-time shot towards the end of that ball game that really solidified a lead. And when you look at Ohio State, okay, they struggled towards the latter part of the season. They lost to Michigan. They lost to Wisconsin. They almost lost to Northwestern if it wasn't for a quick bucket at the end by Jared Selinger. I really think Jared Selinger has a difficult time playing against the likes of a Wisconsin or Michigan or teams, you know, that – or able to space out. They have that three or that four that can knock down jump shots. You can involve him in screen and roll scenarios, but he really played well towards the end of that ball game against Michigan State. Aaron Kraft, a guard that can defend. And when William Buford, uh, when he's making shots, they're one of the top teams in the country. Yep. Not that deep, but still, they play with a, a ton of intensity on the defense. And, and they have the components that you generate. You have Kraft, who's very, very good. You have the big guy. You got the shooter. They have the things that if they come together, could be a very dangerous team, not only in the Big Ten, but the NCAA tournament. Michigan State always seems to be in the NCAA tournament a tough out. I don't know why, but they always seem to be a tough out. Well, they get it done, and Tom Izzo right now has to be up there with Bill Self for the Coach of the Year award in the country. And this team, they struggle at the beginning of the year, losing to Duke and to North Carolina. Everybody writ this team off, wrote this team off. Excuse me, Draymond Green, a guy who's probably the Big Ten Player of the Year. He just gives you everything he can. One of the most versatile players in the country. Now, it will hurt that they lost Brandon Dawson. He tore his ACL, another guard that can apply pressure on a perimeter. But Keith Appling starting to find his way, and I really love the job that Adrian Payne and Derek Nix are doing down low. Derek Nix using that body weight to score against Ohio State, also a guy that can push Jared Sollinger off the block, and then Adrian Payne using his length to block shots on the bigger right. Sollinger down low. And I guess the obvious answer is the reason they do so well is they play defense and they usually rebound, which yeah. is two of the things you need to do. All right, so you talked about the top there. We know Michigan also as well as one of those teams that has a chance to do some damage here. How about a sleeper then that we haven't talked about? Well, IU, you, you got to go to Tom Crane, and I love watching this team play, their ability to spread the floor, guys like Christian Watford, uh, Jordan Halls knocking down the three-point shot, and also Victor Oladipo, a guy that can mm. put the ball down on the ground and attack. And you when you think him. about how good they are at home, I mean, you yeah. beat Kentucky, you beat Ohio State, you beat Michigan State, now you just have to do it on the road. If they can put it together, they can be a big-time sleeper in the Big yeah, Ten tournament. Of course, Zeller, uh, he and Robbie Hummel getting awards as the Big Ten tournament kicks off shortly. So that's the sleeper team. We've given you the top teams. Which is the matchup you want to see? End this thing. I mean, the game came down to the wire 
uh, the other day, watching William Buford make that shot. I would love to see Ohio State go against Michigan State. Draymond Green go against Jared Sollinger. William Buford, will he be locked down? Will he come to play like he did last game? You know, how will Knicks, how will Payne use their defensive tactics to push Jared Sollinger off the block? Will they frustrate him by playing him in the perimeter? Would love to see these two teams battle for a Big Ten championship. All right, Michigan fans want to see how Trey Burke handles his first Big Ten tournament as well. That's Jay Williams. I'm Carl Ravitch. Our coverage begins Thursday, but follow it all week on Championship Week. So the tournament begins Thursday in Indianapolis. That's going to do it for the ESPN3 Halftime Report. I'm Prim Saripipat. Enjoy the second half. The Big East tournament is... Look at Ewing! Backwards stop! Amazing! Allen with Iverson on it, throws one up and... Oh! McNamara, three-point... Oh! Overtime number six! Connecticut has won the Big East championship! Yo, wait a minute, we covered all this stuff up. I just, I'm immune to it. I'm immune to it all. I've been immune to any of this stuff now. I'm not saying I'm right feeling that way, but I never, I'm never outraged by any of this. Nor am I. And again, I think that speaks to, I think it speaks to, to culture. I think it speaks to the, the time and space that we occupy where almost nothing can be stunning anymore. And if it is, it's stunning for a day. We talk about it all day until we are done being stunned by that and wait for the next stunning thing, and then we move on down the road to that. And we're talking about 10 people since 2001. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a long time. It's not a giant number. I'm not excusing any of it. It's just people see this, and they're, they're looking for something that, where they go, wait, what? I think the biggest thing about it is that when you read the story, the NCAA allowing basketball teams to kind of police themselves. Right, and the, and idea, that, the idea that you could, one player continued playing after failing four different tests. I yeah, because if you're good, guess what? They're going to keep rolling them out there, which right. is we wrong. We don't, know yeah. that, we don't know that the player was good, but you'd probably guess, as is the case guess in what? life, yeah. that, the, that the player who's given that much wiggle room is the player that, that, can, that can make the biggest impact on the floor. And what this means is there'll probably be some kind of change made where there's even more testing and there's more stuff so everybody can feel better about it. And as long as people that aren't involved in sports feel better about some sort of policy that makes themselves feel better, I guess that's some kind of solution. It just seems like more more problems here. And, you know, we read this stuff. I never I, – my take is never different on it. Exactly. I, I, I would summon outrage if it was real. But if nothing – you're not going to hear me say anything that's not authentic. And I'm, I'm just not outraged by this, so I can't pretend that I am. The takeaway from the show is next, CSPN Radio. NFL offseason two-a-days on Mike and Mike in the morning continue Wednesday with the Giants and Patriots on ESPN Radio and ESPNRadio.com. E-discovery laws and government regulations require that certain businesses save electronic communication, namely emails, or face potential fines. Barracuda Networks, the world leader in content security, application delivery, and data protection, with more than 130,000 customers worldwide, can help. The Barracuda Message Archiver indexes and preserves all email communication while enforcing policies for regulatory compliance. Save email. Avoid penalties. Visit barracuda.com slash archiver to try the Barracuda Message Archiver free for 30 days. That's barracuda.com slash archiver. Manta.com here with small business owner Larry Vecchio of Grandma's Italian Cheesecake in the Bronx. Be right there. Okay. Uh, with Manta, business has grown 400%. Seems like 500. Well, if Larry had a minute, he'd tell you how easy it is to get your free Manta profile. It's a piece of cake. And how Manta helps him get found on search engines and smartphones. Nope. Championship Week, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. In the Big East, impossible is probable. Remember when a kid from Scranton blew the roof off the building? McNamara, three-point roll! This is the Big East Tournament. Think you've seen it all? You have it.
Welcome back to Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods, the 2012 Big East Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters. All games of the Big East Championship can be seen in 3D on ESPN 3D. Pittsburgh on top by five. Dave Pash alongside Doris Burke. As uh, the winner of this game will move on to face Georgetown tomorrow. Mo Harkless keeping St. John's in the doors in the first half. Well, you have to have talent, but you also have to be willing to accept the burden of being the go-to guy. Harrison and Harkless have done that all season. And Harkless was tremendous early in this half, but he gets uh, the job done in a variety of different ways. Can stretch her from deep, but doesn't use that three ball a lot. Uses that size to get in the lane and make plays in traffic. Has got the in-between game, rebounds it well. Just extraordinary. Ashton Gibbs, the leading scorer for Pittsburgh with 15 points, three of seven from three-point land. God's gift to Chua had nine rebounds, five offensive rebounds. A lot of those, though, were off of his misses. He was one of eight from the field. He missed a lot of layups inside. I don't think he's trying to pad his rebounding stats. <laughs> I just don't think he's a good finisher. <laughs> Harrison was just four of 11 shooting, over three from three-point land. Pittsburgh trying to keep hopes alive of an 11th straight NCAA tournament. They turn it over, though, on their opening possession, and a layup by Sir Dominic Pointer on the other end. So once again, not making them execute for it, just turning them over. This is, you know, we're so used to seeing Pittsburgh being a great execution team, understanding where their shots should come from. Not been the case this year. They have struggled with turnovers. And 14th in the Big East in turnover margin during the regular season. And at the bottom of the league in a lot of defensive stats, last in steals. Still a great rebounding team. Number one in rebound margin, but just plus two over St. John's in the first half. Shot clock winding down. It's at five. On the drive, Patterson gets it to go. Uh, just a great use of the dribble and then the strength to go right at the rim. And keep in mind here as St. John's comes to the offensive end, Harkless had 13 points, 13 of the first 26 St. John scored, but he didn't score over the final five minutes. Stripped by Patterson, numbers for Pitt, Woodall. And Patterson with back-to-back -back baskets, and the lead is seven for Pittsburgh in a timeout. Welcome back to New York City. Game two of the 2012 Big East Championship. Pittsburgh extending its lead to seven. Time now for the Reese's Perfect Play. 
Well, you've got a St. John's team that has Amir Garrett gets stripped in the open floor, turns the other direction, and listen, you're looking for any easy opportunities you can get. And Trayvon Woodall, nice job. You know, he's just reading the defense. Even though they don't commit to him, it's a better play because you have a high percentage finisher coming right down the lane. You had numbers, you had the rebounding position if necessary. And, you know, we talked about his absence and its impact on, on Pittsburgh. And I don't think that was the sole reason they struggled out of the gates, but certainly part of it because Gibbs was forced to move up a position. Missed 11 games with that groin injury. Got six assists in this ball game. Early in the year, a lot of people thought Pitt was still a contender for the Big East Championship. They lost at home to Wagner. They lost on the road to DePaul as Harkless turns it over. At some point, you thought it was going to get better, though, but Pitt had an eight-game losing streak. Then they started to get going. They had a four-game win streak. They beat Georgetown during that stretch. And by the way, if they win today, they'll play Georgetown tomorrow. But then they started to go downhill again, a five-game losing streak, which ended last week against St. And that's the case of point. And we just talked about it moments ago. Their turnovers. That's a silly turnover right there. Eight turnover by Pittsburgh. Harkless gets to the loose ball. Now from the corner, a three-point try off target by Harrison. And out of bounds to Pittsburgh. Andy Katz had a chance to talk with St. John's coach Mike Dunlap. And Mike told me here coming out for the second half that uh, they've got to get back to making those easy baskets. That's sort of what got St. John's that early lead earlier in the first half. And obviously you have to make some turnovers, kind of like that. That was unforced, but create off the turnovers for their offense. And more than anything, on the defensive side, he said they've got to find Ashton Gibbs for the rest of the second half. They cannot let him get hot. Those turnovers are brutal. Now, it's not like St. John's, those last two possessions, has caused anything to happen. Those are, those are just mindless, mind-boggling turnovers. Back-to-back uh, -back possessions. Green kept his balance as he slipped. Harrison on the baseline, finds a cutting, Harkless hanging, can't score, but it'll go to the line. You're letting a young team hang around because you're hurting yourselves. You know, these are self-inflicted wounds by his team. Dante Taylor picks up his third foul. Well, and watch this play. One, the drive to get by, stay in bounds, the presence of mind to make that. And how about Harkless? See, what do great scorers do? Man, they get in that lane and they're thinking, I'm getting an N1. I want three. I'm not, I'm not walking out of here with anything less than three. I love that. Drew the contact, then went to the off hand, the left hand, too, to try to finish. Harkless, 66% free throw shooter. This is his first point in almost eight minutes' time. Going back to the end of the first half. Harkless gets them both. 15 points. He's perfect at the line tonight. Or today, rather, 4-4. Four four. See, I think, believe it or not, Harrison went to the line more times than he did. Harrison's at six attempts per game. I think Harkless should have taken more three throws, free throws. Almost another pit turnover. Here's Gibbs. Pull up jumper, too strong. Zana with a rebound, blocked from behind, but Pitt keeps possession. Good job by Pointer, the gang rebound there. See, so Chew is out of the ball game, so are you suspect on the glass? Ashton Gibbs! Doing what Mike Dunlap told Andy Katz. St. John's has to do, find him. But they didn't there, and Gibbs now with 18 points is 4-3. Looking like the guy as an offensive foul charges drawn here by Woodall as Harkless picks up his third foul. But this looks like the Ashton Gibbs of last year, the guy that was named Big East preseason player of the year, but finished just honorable mention. Yeah, I mean, just how fast is he shooting the basketball and how accurate. You talked about how many threes, triple-digit threes a year ago, so dangerous and at a high percentage. Yeah, 49% last year, 33 this year. He's four of eight today. And Pittsburgh leads by eight. Here's Zana in the high post. Here's Gibbs. Shot clock at nine. Zana draws the foul. Third team foul on St. John's here in the half. Third personal on Garrett. So Garrett and Harkless both with three. And again, St. John's only play six guys. Second. 
That's not by choice. That's by necessity. The rest of the guys are walk on. St. John's had a couple of guys ruled academically ineligible. Jakar Sampson and Norvell Pell. And also, Amir Garrett was academically ineligible for the first semester. And you had Nuruddin Lindsay who left the program. They did get Jamal Branch, who transferred from Texas A&M. He joined the team in mid-January practice, but uh, he can't play until December. One out of two for Zana at the free throw line. Pittsburgh on top by nine. Largest lead of the game for the Panthers. Harkless with Robinson defending. Harkless raising and short for the jumper. Here comes Woodall for Pitt. Here's Woodall for three. Off the back rim. Long rebound to Woodall. Robinson had the mismatch on the guard. Harrison was calling for the ball. Both teams under 40% shooting. Gibbs on the baseline. Can't get it to go, and Robinson is there with a putback. Triple drive and compromises your rebounding ability. And a timeout here again by St. John's. Double digit lead for the first time, pit by 11. We talked about this being uh, the most successful program between 2001 and 2012 in the Big East. That's a decade's worth of Big East basketball. Ashton Gibbs a season ago, so good from the line. Little screen by Zana. And you're right, it's been a quick trigger for him today. And I don't know if you can catch the react. Great job getting balance, holding form. Then watch Jamie does. He's like, back, get back. <laughs> That's classic. And 18 points now for Ashton Gibbs. Fueling the frenzy brought to you by Diet Mountain Dew. And you see the three-point shooting today based on what he's done during the season. Coming into today, he was four of his last 25 from three. He's four of eight today. It's hard to, when you watch his form, isn't it hard to see how he could struggle that much? He always seems to be on balance. He gets it off quickly. He holds his follow through. They went four wins in four days back in 2008, won the Big East Championship. Can they go five in five? On a 10 2 run right now over the last four minutes with an 11 point lead against St. John. Garrett going baseline. Missed inside, then Garrett got the rebound while on the ground. Finds Harkless for the jam. Well, he's a pitcher. That's a different kind of delivery by Garrett, <laughs> but it works. He acted more as a catcher there while being <laughs> down doing the receiving. First St. John's field goal in five minutes. Here's Robinson to the bucket. No paint defense that time by St. John. Yeah, what did Jamie Dixon tell Andy Katz? You know, we got to get back to those easy baskets, the layups, and the free throw line. Harrison, who has struggled shooting the ball today, 4 of 13 now. Achua with another rebound. The career high 10 rebounds for Achua. Pointer falling away. In and out. Out of bounds to Pittsburgh. Got a timeout. Pittsburgh leading St. John's by 11 here in New York City. Winner advances to play Georgetown tomorrow.
This game is streaming live on your computer, tablet, or smartphone via WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Pittsburgh with its largest lead of the game here in New York, the Big East Championship. 45 34, leading St. John's by 11. Trying to move on to play Georgetown tomorrow in round two. The Big East Championship game presented by American Eagle Outfitters will put the night cap on a great Saturday at 9. It all starts with college game day at noon, covered by State Farm. You got the ACC semis, Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship game. Another edition of College Game Day at 8, followed by the Big East Championship. Four teams earning double by Syracuse, Marquette, Notre Dame, and Cincinnati. If you would have, if I would have asked you that at the beginning of the year, who are the four teams that get double buys? You might have said Syracuse. Would you have said Marquette, Notre Dame, or Cincinnati? I think Marquette, yes. Uh, Notre Dame, absolutely not. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I think. Uh, I think Coach Bray loves his guards, but I think they've probably developed an accepted responsibility maybe a little bit faster than he expected. Jack Cooley, biggest, most improved player. Yeah, and they expect to win and make those plays, Grant and Atkins. That's what you love. Traveling call here on Johnson. And you got two members of the Marquette Golden Eagles that made the first team all Big East, Darius Johnson, Odom, and Jake Crowder. Uh, the Big East Player of the Year will be announced tomorrow. We'll see if it's Crowder. He was the only unanimous first-team pick. You could make a case. He's, you know, outside of Kevin Jones, the most valuable player in the league. Those two would probably have the most value relative to what their team success is. St. John's ball down 11. Here's Harkless, who has 17 points. The only Red Storm player in double figures. Harrison missing the three. There's Harkless with the putback. Sixth rebound, 19 points now for the outstanding freshman. Well, a combined 11 for 24 shooting between Harrison and Harkless. But the reality is, Pittsburgh knows those are the only two guys that are going to give them consistent offense. You don't have to almost worry about the other guys. Yep. I don't think they can generate enough offense. And Harrison now 0 for 5 from 3. St. John's shooting 33% for the field. Here's a three-pointer by Johnson. Another freshman, John Johnson, only averages four points per game. He's got eight, though, today. He can shoot it, though, around 40% during the season. Well, the guy who scored 2,300 points in high school, you know he can score it. Harrison with the rebound after the Achua air ball, but then Harrison missing. Harrison gets it back, draws contact, and will go to the line. Second team foul in Pittsburgh. Well, out of Philadelphia, four-time All-Stater, John Johnson. He can get it going in a hurry. Not as consistent maybe as you'd like, but one of those guys who would it shock you next year if he has a big year. That's kind of how it's been at Pitt. There are a lot of times where they'll have guys that are under the radar as freshmen that improve over time. Ashton Gibbs is a guy like that. Brad Wanamaker as well. And as sophomores or juniors, they all of a sudden, all of a sudden become all league type players. That's exactly right. Ashton Gibbs. And Ashton Gibbs was a freshman. The team was Levance Fields and Dewan Blair's team, and it just sort of gets passed. And you know, inside Madison Square Garden, they have the coaches up on the big board talking sometimes. And Oliver Cannell talked about that when you have one group of juniors sort of discussing with the freshmen the expectations that what's that's what makes a program there's Johnson he thought about it this time puts it on the floor and then throws it into the backcourt pointer gets to it drives and misses there's more for three 13 point Pittsburgh lead a five-point swing. St. John's had a layup, blew it, and then Pitt nails a three. Harkless has it go off his foot. Tie up. It'll stay with St. John's. I tell you what, if you turn it over against a good team, Jamie Dixon just like, you've got to be kidding me, guys. But this will make them feel a little bit better. St. John's its own miscue. Mr. Moore delivers. <laughs>
fourth game in as many nights. A rematch of the championship game a year ago. Young posting and jamming. They're crushing the Hoyas on the glass. Ramon is wide open. Pittsburgh, the champions of the Big East. Pittsburgh won four games in four days before they went to that extra day of the Big East Championship. And each of the last three years, they got the double bye, didn't have success. This year, they play on day one, and they got a 13-point lead on St. John. Well, that was a tremendous team. And think about some of the recruiting scores they've had in this area of the country. Mr. Ramon, one of those guys. Dewan Blair, of course, a local product out of, uh, do you know how to say that high school? Is it Shenley High School in yep. Pittsburgh? It is. I'm now a member of the San Antonio Spurs. Now you got Trayvon Woodall is from Brooklyn. Gibbs is from New Jersey. As Harkless now has 21 points, trying to keep St. John's in it in what could be if they were to lose his final game in college. A lot of talk about whether he'll go to the NBA. And St. John's with a good trap there on Moore. Woodall gets on the floor and a jump ball. Woodall uh, respecting the hustle of Garrett after the play. Now with more on Mo Harkless and his future, here's Andy Katz. Well, when I was up above here at the Garden talking to Steve Lavin after we did our interview, we talked about Mo Harkless and what he will do in terms of his NBA draft decision. Remember, there's a new rule this season. There is no more testing the draft process. You're going to have to make this decision after the Final Four. It's one-time decision. So, Lavin said, Harkless is going to have a tough decision to make because he thought under the old rule, Harkless definitely would have tested the draft process. But this season, he can't do that. He's going to have to probably go down to the wire in terms of his decision. Great rebound there is seventh. What do you think is the next step? His offensive foul is called here in green can in I terms just, of Harkness getting better. Can goals. I just say I hate that rule? I don't understand, and I know Jeff Van Gundy, who's from the pro side of things, has said the same thing. I don't understand why he, they can't enter the draft, and if they're not drafted, come back. What's the harm in that? I think Jay Billis, I feel like even Jay has said that. I could be wrong. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But and, and maybe just because you're thinking it's disruptive to the program, I don't get it. If you're not drafted, what is the harm with them coming back? Blocking foul called here. And that's the third on pointer. 14 foul on St. John's. What, what would be the opposition to that? I, I'm with you. I, I don't like the rule either. And obviously coaches like Steve Lavin don't like the rule because... Well, Harkless, right after the season, may be thinking, I'm, I'm ready for the NBA, and a month later, you may feel like, you know, I could use another year in yeah. college, but it'd be too late at that point. Yeah, and I'll just say this, you, you're asking about Harkless and his development. I, I think a stronger left hand to be able to go both directions off the drive. He's right-handed on the drive, but he's got everything. You, you know, he'll get stronger. His body's going to change, obviously. He won't look like this five years from now. He's very lean. He's strong. Tremendous jumper, can rebound in traffic, has the in-between game, could be a more consistent uh, long-range shooter. But here's the reality, Dave. He's smart enough to just sprinkle that aspect of the game in. He doesn't make that as bread and butter. I, I love, this is my favorite freshman in the Big East, and there are a lot of ones that I love watching play. Bahannon and Henton are two of them. Another foul, this time on Patterson, as Garrett draws the chart. First on Patterson. Second, actually, on Patterson. Thirteen foul on Pitt. St. John's with the ball down 11, 10 and a half to go. Those count turnovers, right? Yep. So Pittsburgh holding St. John's at 32 percent, but can't get out of their own way to a certain extent. Twelve turnovers by the Panthers door. Here's Harkless facing up. Great drive and finish with the left hand. Again, you know, he's going to attack that high foot. You give him the right hand to drive, he's going right by you. He's a pro. Neil Hacho, and that was with the left hand there, shielded his body beautifully. Taylor fouled by Green. Now just how easy does Mo Harkless make this look? If I'm the defender, I want the other foot. I want my left foot up so that he can't attack it. Watch this. 
See, if his left foot is high, then that's going to force him to the middle. Instead, he goes baseline. Look at all the blue jerseys to the middle of the paint. If he had forced him the other direction, he's got help, and, and Harkless is going to have to give that up. Instead, he gives up the high foot. And the one question about him is what kind of a passer is he? Because in the NBA, they're going to do that. Can he make that pass? He doesn't have an assist in this ball game. It was not great over the course of the season in terms of assists, but how many times has he had to give it up? Yeah, that's a good point. I think I want him to score at the NBA level. <laughs> and he can do that. 15 points per game on the year among the leaders in the Big East. St. John's ball down 10. Inside 10 minutes to go. Winner to play Georgetown tomorrow. Connecticut has already advanced. Alley oop for Harkless. And excellent defense by Robinson, but Harkless still got the ball. And Harrison out of control. That's right. Rough day for Harrison. 4 of 15 shooting. Does have eight rebounds. A turnover there. Robinson in the paint and gets the roll. Nine points for Nasir Robinson, pit up 12. Harrison will try it again and miss again. And nobody under the basket to rebound for St. John. They can't win to the Alistair. They can't win with him struggling. That's the bottom line. That would be like DePaul trying to win without Young and Cleveland Melvin scoring. It's just not going to happen. St. John's foul, 16 foul on the Red Storm. Harrison is 0 for 6 from 3. Only one other player has attempted a 3, and that's Harkless, and he made his. So Pointer picking up the foul is fourth. He'll stay in the game. Four now, although it looks like a two is going to come back in. Again, just a one-man bench for St. John's. What do you love about Harrison? You just touched on it. Yeah, the guy's not stopping because he's not scoring. He's boarded it. He's stolen several balls. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy is just he's so competitive. Only three assists for St. John's as a team. That's a problem. 16 field goals, three assists. And he doesn't have one. Here's Patterson for three. Rattles in and out, but Nasir Robinson is there. And a great play by Robinson, getting the put back as well. Well, he's made a career out of that. That ability to go and basically out jump somebody, even though he doesn't have position. It cost him a big moment, though, in an NCAA tournament game. Well, that's what everybody remembers, but Robinson has had an outstanding career for Pitt. Played through tremendous pain every day. He hasn't been able to practice in a couple years, really, as Garrett hits a three. I think that just answered your question about whether or not Harrison could pass the basketball. He had to send that ball through yeah. the paint and yeah. bodies. First points for Amir Garrett. Who had been in double figures in three in his last four games, but struggled so far today. Although he did hit that, which gets St. John's within 11. Here's Gibbs and Harkless there with the swat. St. John's in transition. Garrett again for three. This time misfires. The other thing too about Harkless, he blocked the shot, and he was one of the first guys down the floor. In transition. Here's Gibbs in the corner. They didn't find him, but Gibbs missed the three. Offensive rebound, Taylor. Patterson the extra pass. Layup for Robinson. Nicely done. Just on selfish. Garrett swooping through the lane, gets the layup. You yeah, see, I'd rather him not settle for jump shots, Garrett. He's a strong left-hand driver, can get by guys with a good first step. Taylor posting up, nice catch. Pass from Patterson, and Taylor is fouled. Pitt's best game of the year was against St. John's a week ago. And the Panthers getting the better of St. John's so far in this one, leading by 11. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Live your life. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And PlayStation Vita, available in stores now.
The Big East tournament is. Look at Ewing. Backward stop. Amazing. Allen with Iverson on it. Throws one up. And... Oh! McNamara, a three point run. Oh! Overtime number six. Has won the Big East championship. Some of the great moments in Big East championship history. Pitt has been a part of that. But is that changing next year? Maybe. Pitt leading here by 11. Andy Katz has the story of Pitt's future. Well, here's what we know for sure. West Virginia is definitely out of the Big East, going to the Big 12 next season. They're going to pay a $20 million exit fee. But as for Pittsburgh and Syracuse, they are still locked into the Big East for two more seasons. Now, it may only be one, but Steve Peterson, as you see on your screen right now, the Pittsburgh Athletic Director, has made it clear they do not want to pay more than that $5 million exit fee to the Big East. Now, they would like to be out after next season and not have to play two more seasons, two more lame duck seasons before they go to the ACC. We'll have to wait and see. John Marinato, the Big East Commissioner, has made it clear he wants to hold these schools to that commitment. Now, they relinquished on West Virginia, and they made that agreement to pay that $20 million. But in 2013, they're going to add Memphis, Central Florida, SMU, Houston, possibly Temple in men's basketball. They're adding Boise State and San Diego State in football. So it would be quite a sort of uncomfortable mess if they also kept Pitt and Syracuse for that one holdover season. Everyone I've talked to assumes that Pitt and Syracuse will stay one more season. After that, they'll go to the ACC, which is all said. They'll take them whenever they can. If I'm a conference commissioner, I would ask for an FBI expert in body language and other nonverbal communication because it just feels like you can't trust a single soul despite the fact that you've had uh, years and years of association in conference. I mean, just think of, of this league and this championship and all the great moments and I know people around the Big East obviously upset with Pittsburgh but certainly with Syracuse leaving. Syracuse is I don't know if you could say the face of the Big East because of uh, you know, the fact that they also are a football school as well as basketball, but obviously you know, great tradition with Villanova and Georgetown St. John's that are non-football powers. And then West Virginia you know, leaving to go to the Big 12 next year. Of course, Big East will be adding schools, some for both football and basketball, some for just football. The Pitt football program's in good hands with the Peterson's hire of Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator at Wisconsin, after uh, what many felt was just a shameful move by Todd Graham and the way he left the program to go to Arizona State. J.J. Moore misses. Here's Harrison on the drive. The floater off the mark. A two of just can't put it back. And now a Harrison foul. That's four on him. Well, you can't fault Achua's effort. I mean, a guy has just worked incredibly hard. When you think about the number of close-range finishes this young man has put himself in a position to have. And you just hope a year from now he's a better finisher than this because he has worked, used that frame and that athleticism ability to get off his feet to get near the rim. But it doesn't do you any good unless you can finish. It's 11 rebounds. That's a career high. But he's 1 of 10 from the field. As the 18 foul, so a one and one for Pitt. Moore gets the free throw. J.J. Moore gets them both. He's got eight points, and Pittsburgh leads by 15 inside six minutes to go. And St. John's make a run. A lot of garden magic last year for the Red Storm. What about this year? It's a good start. Pointer with the jam off the Garrett miss. And Garrett is hobbling as he comes back down the court. He's got to fight it out, though. St. John's only has six guys. Moore down the lane. Out to Woodall. Moore puts it on the floor. Oh, nice pass to Robinson. Hard foul. Garrett's fourth, 19th foul. St. John's coming with some pressure here. Need some fast finishes on the offensive end. And how about this by Sir Dominic Pointer? 
leaving no doubt. Wow. Pointer, a freshman from Detroit. Now, even if Harkless leaves, there are some pretty good players returning. Harrison, Pointer, Garrett, all freshmen, although Garrett, a highly thought of baseball player. Who knows what his future is, whether he decides to play pro baseball or not. And you also have Phil Green, who got better as the Big East season went along. What is it, 96 miles per hour? Garrett throws it. And he's got tremendous size. Robinson missed the second one, but more with the offensive rebound. I think you've got to develop some, some basketball skill of your pointer. Moore tried to hang and score, lost the ball, but it was last touched by St. John. Hey, pointer is an amazing athlete. He's got to find a, a signature thing he can do on the offensive end of the floor. And they've talked to him a little bit about making sure he's aggressive and assertive. They have searched all season for that third score. And Doris, you and I talked in game one about the impact of, of not having Jim Calhoun and what that's meant for UConn. What about as Robinson call for the offensive foul? What, what about for St. John's not having Steve Lavin really being a part of the team this year? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think it's unfortunate because we, we know Lav and the kind of effusive personality he is, and he's picked his spots. You know, he was at practice yesterday, and uh, there have been moments where his presence has changed the demeanor of this team. It's just come in spots. Andy Katz has more on that. Well, I'm talking to Lavin up there above here in Madison Square Garden. He said there was a point over the last two weeks where he could have returned, but he didn't want to be disruptive because obviously Mike Dunlap has done a great job coaching this team for the most part in his absence. And so he did not want to sort of mess with what's already happened here when obviously have Dunlap finish it. But he also said that he expects Dunlap, who was interviewed before, as you said earlier in the broadcast, at Wyoming and other jobs, to return next season, really enjoys it. His family likes the New York area. And Gene Cady. Lab said that Gene Cady will be back with him no matter what. That uh, Cady's health is doing great, and he loves having him as a trusted aide next to him. Gene Cady was uh, Steve Lavin's first boss back in 1988. Also Steve Lavin's first recruit. Rico Hines of UCLA is on the St. John's bench as Harkless misses the layup for the rebound. And then Harkless still working hard. Deflected the pass but then picked up his fourth foul and the 10th team foul on St. John's. St. John's foul number four. Oh, Harkless is his fourth. To St. John's you see during their huddle. Uh, an empty chair there. Meant for Steve Lavin. As you see Gene Cady. Standing behind the uh, St. John's coaches. More guys in suits than in game gear for St. John. Six players on scholarship. Five of those freshmen. One more free throw for Ashton Gibbs, who has 19 points. Gibbs maybe with a game that will springboard him to bigger things, things that we saw last year out of him that could pose a problem for Georgetown tomorrow, and then who knows, maybe Cincinnati on Thursday. Still some work to do here, four minutes left, but a 15-point lead. Here on the drive, count it, and a Pittsburgh foul. Well, you saw the effort of Harkless in the last play. This is a team that will not quit and quit. And this is what I'm talking about, not settling for jumpers. If you're Amir Garrett, he's got great strength, length to keep that basketball away from the defender. Good stuff on a drive. 17 following Pitt. Zana picking up the personal. And Garrett, you talked about his size, also a lefty, which never hurts as a pitcher at that size. Great baseball player hoping to be a great basketball player. And hoping to play at least one more game here at the Big East Championship. St. John's back within 12. Pitt trying to get the ball in. Robinson gets it across the timeline. And more will slow things down. Gibbs, the leading scorer in the game for Pitt with 20. Harkless says 23 to lead St. John's. 
Shot clock at two. And it'll be pit ball when we come back. 12 point lead for the Panthers. Afternoon session in New York almost complete. Two more games to come tonight at MSG. Pittsburgh here for the sixth time in the last seven years. Georgetown hasn't won it since 89. Gray got caught. Hibbert gets the dunk. A dominant performance by Roy Hibbert. And look at the frustration for Aaron Gray. The Hoyas are Big East champions. Georgetown went on to the final four that year. And tomorrow, if Pitt survives, it will meet Georgetown in the second round following West Virginia and Connecticut, which will tip things off at noon. I absolutely love that shot of John Thompson Jr. and John Thompson III hugging after that championship. And listen, how many guys do you know who could follow their dad? And I know there's a coach in between there, but with, with what John Jr. established at Georgetown, the dynasty under uh, with Patrick Ewing, and to be his own man and to do it differently than his father, I just think it's so cool. Taylor with a bucket. Andy, I know you got a chance to talk to JT3 recently. Here's a dunk. Pointer with a jam. Gets it back to 12 as we close in on three minutes to go. Woodall fouled. All right, Andy, go ahead and jump in I talked in here to John, John Thompson, Thompson Jr. actually yesterday about the changing landscape in the Big East. And to quote him, he said it, quote, sickens him because it, it, it look back at the great rivalries. And you guys were talking about this earlier with Georgetown and Syracuse, Georgetown and St. John's. And really frustrating yeah. for John Thompson Jr. about how football had driven the expansion and the realignment in the Big East and other conferences because he wanted to see, obviously, what they had built under the late Dave Gavitt to see it be preserved here in the Big East. Now there's just so much uncertainty, obviously, in college athletics and for a program like Georgetown, which clearly needs to align itself with some of the other major players that are left in this conference uh, that don't play Division One football. Well, I, I, you know, I kind of uh, understand how much football is a part of this, but I, I think that the ACC coaches didn't like that the Big East had sort of superseded that conference. And you think historically the ACC had been had been the best conference in college basketball. But for a long stretch now, the Big East had far and away taken that man. So why not go get the two most consistently good or two of the most consistently good basketball programs and basically try to take the Big East down? Parkless with 25 points now for St. John's. What could be his final 
appearance at Madison Square Garden as a collegiate. And, and when, when some of these generation coaches retire, if the story ever comes out, in fact, that would be an interesting book to be written. Well, I'm sure there's a ton that we don't know about what's going on behind the scenes. Well, the Big East survived before, though. They lost Miami, Virginia Tech, lost in college. Now, granted, those were not basketball powers. Those were football powers. And the football conference has struggled as Woodall is fouled. Obviously, basketball has continued to thrive. ESPN's coverage of championship week continues tonight with a doubleheader, first at 7 Eastern. Number four, UConn. Number three, Notre Dame in the women's Big East championship. Then at nine, Detroit and Valpo in the Horizon League men's championship. Now the Notre Dame women trying to step out of the shadow of one of the programs that has loomed largest over women's college basketball, the University of Connecticut, seven national titles by Gina Wariema's team, exceeded only by Pat Summit's Tennessee team with eight titles. They come off a win in the SEC, but that's a heck of a women's game tonight, folks. Amir Garrett just fouled out, and as mentioned, the men's game at nine. Valpo's in action, and he has more on that. Yeah, there's been so much emotional attachment, obviously, to Butler out of the Horizon League. But if you watch this game if between Detroit and Valparaiso, you're going to see Bryce Drew on the sideline in his first season as a Division I head college coach. Obviously, we remember from 1998 when he hit that shot to beat Ole Miss. But Bryce Drew has had a phenomenal year coaching this team under unbelievable duress. His father, Homer Drew, had prostate cancer and prostate cancer surgery in the fall. He's doing great. And at the same time, his mother, Janet Drew, was diagnosed with bladder cancer, a battle that she is still dealing with throughout the course of this season. And Bryce Drew, after practices, sometimes after games, would drive up to the Chicago Medical Center to be with his mother and help his father out as much as possible. His sister Dana lives in Valparaiso, Indiana. Scott Drew actually flew up with his family, the head coach of Baylor, to be with his entire family when Valparaiso clinched the Horizon League title a week ago Friday. Just a tremendous scene within the Drew family. And if they make the NCAA tournament, it really would be great news as they are finally getting good news with the cancer with his mom, Janet, obviously his dad, Homer. Well, I'll tell you, it's a family who's been sustained by their faith. And it's amazing how powerful that can be when you're trying to overcome difficult circumstances. And I uh, saw a feature piece on Homer Drew talking about exactly that. By the way, Pointer just fouled out, so who's going to play for St. John's? They only have six guys, and two of them have just fouled out. Well, you talk about Valpo and all that's gone on off the court as Jamal White comes into the game for St. John's. And Andy mentioned that shot by Drew. Oh. And, and everybody's talking about obviously about Kemba's shot last year against Pitt. But and that was in the Big East tournament, not the NCAA tournament. That, that's one of the great all-time shots well, in the NCAA tournament. Well, everybody's stolen the play, right? <laughs> yeah, right? Everybody has stolen that basketball play. Now Taylor at the line. Pitt leading by 12. 146 away from advancing to play Georgetown tomorrow. They beat the Hoyas during the regular season, 72-60. to 60. Pitt has had a season full of injuries. They had Kem Birch, who was a highly recruited guy, lead the program. Can they put it together and win five games in five days? Well, I'll tell you one thing they'll have to do is, is turn down the turnover number. It wasn't extraordinarily high today, but it would pinch you against a better team. 13 turnovers today. A foul before the shot on the drive. Phil Green was bumped. And no wasted opportunities here uh, by St. John's. If you notice on the sideline, Jamal Branch, who is a highly thought of point guard, a transfer uh, from Texas A&M, who sits between two members of the coaching staff, sort of getting some tutoring. Uh, and it's a perfect place to be. Learn the system. He hears what we're thinking. You see what he did a season ago. He joined the program on January 16th, so he will not be eligible to play for St. John's until December 12th. Another pit foul, so it'll be another one and one. The 19th foul. And what his presence will do, uh, uh, D'Angelo Harrison now, you know, he can have the ball in his hands a little bit less if necessary. He can push up a little bit. Harrison gets the first. It's been an off game for him. Just four of 18 from the field, 0 for 6 from 3. But he's got a double double 11 points and 10 rebounds. He's a good player, though, and 
third in the Big East in scoring in the league game. St. John's definitely got better down the stretch. The end of the regular season in the 11 games that what Steve Levin calls the fresh five started, they were five and six with that win over Notre Dame. If Harkless comes back, it'll be a team to watch next Ooh, year. Uh, no doubt. No doubt. They need a low post scorer, though, a guy that they can toss the ball into and get easy opportunities and finish at a high percentage. Followed by White. That'll put Woodall at the line. First. Trey Woodall at the line. So Woodall will go to the free throw line. Just four points for him. But just his presence, even though he struggled with turnovers, just having an extra body on the floor to handle the basketball has been a lift for Pittsburgh after missing half of the season with an injury from Brooklyn. And was really looking forward to getting a chance to play. The Big East Championship again after that early exit for Pitt last year in their first game, which was the quarterfinals. Yeah, played for, for Bottom Hurley at St. Anthony's. Don't forget two more games tonight. Seton Hall and a big game against Providence. Big because Seton Hall on the bubble. Joel Lenardi has an in right now as Achua is fouled. Ten Big East teams are in, according to the latest bracketology. Eleven teams from the Big East made it last year, but most would say last year was a much stronger Big East, even though they might get almost as many teams in. Connecticut advanced to the second round, beat DePaul earlier today, 81-67. Mentioned Seton Hall Providence, and then Villanova Rutgers in the final game. Been a tough year for Villanova. Wildcats struggled all season long. Malik Wayne's very good player. Second team all Big East, but they just didn't have enough to contend. Inside a minute left, Pitt throwing it around the horn, trying to keep the clock moving here and advance to round two. Robinson to the bucket, gets the layup. Nasir Robinson has had a terrific ball game with 15 points, eight rebounds, seven of ten from the field. Well, we talked about the pride of the seniors from Pittsburgh, and they showed up. Ashton Gibbs was tremendous in the first half. Nasir Robinson, you're right. He's tried to contend with Harkless, but they delivered. You had to show some pride, and they did. Connecticut, West Virginia tomorrow at noon. Pittsburgh and Georgetown at two. Should be two tremendous second round matchups. And we still have two more first round games tonight on ESPNU. Ashton Gibbs has been in a slump for most of this season. Didn't shoot well overall, five of 14, but he did most of his damage in the first half. 20 points in all. Harkless in what could be his final game at St. John's at 25 and nine rebounds. Well, it's a St. John's team that only has two scores, but Pitt, a little positive sign, held them to just 33% shooting. Harkless, obviously, a big game with 25. But again, you know, you come to New York with new life and you expect your most experienced guys to deliver. They get 35 points between the two guys you would expect. And hopefully the next time St. John's plays a game, Steve Lavin will be on the bench. That's exactly right. In November of next season. And Lavin obviously hoping the Harkless will be with him. Ashton Gibbs had 20 points. Right now he's with Andy Katz. All right, thanks, Dave. Well, Ashton, your first Big East tournament win. How'd it take so long? Uh, defense. Defense. We came out here and um, we just played defense today. Past three years, we, we were a little lackadaisical our first game. So uh, we knew we needed to win. Came out hard and uh, carried over to the offense end, too. How's your confidence in your shot? Uh, feels good. Feels good. I'm going to keep keep moving out the ball. My teammates uh, have confidence in me, too, so I'm going to keep shooting. Georgetown next. What are the chances you can go on a little Kemba Walker-like run here and win five and five? Uh, we're going to take one game at a time, but it's definitely possible. Anything is possible. we got it on our side, so uh, we, we're going to try to make this move. All right, thanks, Ash. All right, thank you. Back to you, Dave. Ashton Gibbs and the Panthers knock off St. John 73-59. They'll play Georgetown tomorrow around two after West Virginia meets Connecticut. Seton Hall Providence tonight at seven on ESPNU. Rutgers and Villanova to follow. And of course the championship game Saturday night 
9 Eastern on ESPN. Coming up next here on ESPN2, College Basketball Live Scoreboard. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Doris Burke, Andy Katz, our entire outstanding crew, I'm Dave Pash. So long for now from the Garden. Out of Carl Ravitch and Jay Williams in the studio.